welcome back. We are here. Finally, so you can really officially say 2022 F1 season has officially kicked off. The last three days, I think, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we have had practices during preseason. So we can see all the cars on the track. I have been, you know, looking through it. I think I did see George Russell having like a pretty good day. I think I've seen Botox struggle or Alpha Romeo struggle. I'm not entirely sure. Like I said, I kind of just skimmed through it. I was looking at some other stuff, so I didn't really have a chance to really, 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 really look at it. But first thing first, hope you guys are doing well, amazing, stupendous, wonderful, lovely, uh, courageous, outstanding. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get to the video. It's going to be three parts. It's going to be day one, day two, and day three in this one video. So I'm trying not, not to pause it as much. To, to just let the videos ride, but anyway, don't forget to like the video and sub as well to the channel if you are new. Let's go get started. Green lights on for a new era of Formula One and the first chance to see the radical new cars on track. Reliability and data gathering was the order of the day, with all 10 teams looking to get as many laps as possible under their belts in Barcelona. Oh, Barcelona. The focus in the garages was on ensuring engines are correctly bedded in and ride heights perfected, with floor performance a particular focus on these new ground effect cars. With a shiny new contract under his belt, it was McLaren's Lando Norris who set the fastest time, clocking a one minute. That's a good start. That's a good start. Yes, I know it's only Barcelona. No one tracks me different, but McLaren. I know a lot of guys are saying Ferrari. I was even saying as well, Ferrari. I feel like Ferrari is going to be the main guys who challenge for Sage and Red Bull. First and first, really good for Lando and McLaren to get that top spot. Fastest lap. That's good. That's, that, that's a good start. Very, very good start. Seconds as they seek to return to the very top of the pinnacle of motorsport. I didn't want to be P1. If anything, I would rather be last because now the expectations are so high. Oh, yeah. And everyone thinks we're incredible. But you good, Lando. Yeah, I think we just did a slightly different run plan to the other people. I think we'll, we'll see in the next few days. People probably go much quicker than what I did. Reigning world champion Max Verstappen, sporting the number one on the nose of his Red Bull, suffered a short trip across the gravel, seemingly caused by cold tyres. Here and there, of course, you lock up, you go a bit wide, just trying to test the, the, the balance and the limit of the car a little bit, step by step. But that was the only blip in what was otherwise a bulletproof performance for his new RB18. That's good. With the Dutch driver completing well over two full race distances. It's great to see the number one on the car. I think the last time it was on the car was actually with, with Sebastian Vettel going into the 2014 season. So uh, great to see that back. And yeah, exciting to get this new era of Formula One underway. Even to the naked eye, the new 2022 cars are strikingly different, with Red Bull seeming to have gone in a slightly different direction with their side pod design, with some suggesting that once again, Adrian Newey may have worked some magic with the new regulations. Of course. But for all the chat about the differences in side pod design, experts say it's the flaws that could be the most crucial element this year in terms of generating aerodynamic performance. George Russell put in a strong shift on his first morning at Mercedes, his W13 looking on rails through the fast and flowing corners. Meanwhile, his seven-time world champion teammate Lewis Hamilton was doing his best to go incognito, surveying the competition up and down the pit lane. Wait, so why is Lewis Hamilton not... Why is Lewis not uh, racing with him? What's up with that? The Briton remarking that he feels this will be one of the most exciting and interesting seasons that he's ever taken part in. Ferrari opted to stop development of their 2021 car early in the season in order to focus on the new F1 75. And it appears their decision has paid off. Charles Leclerc had an impressive day, topping the morning session. It was the Ferrari pair who set the bar in terms God of distance. God damn. Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. Alfa Romeo and Haas. So listen, I'm not, I'm not really going to say too much about that because I don't really think it's that serious, but just overall, man. Jeez. Ferrari, very, very good start though. Look at Williams, 132 laps. Completing an incredible 153 laps. That's impressive. Day. Red Bull not far back on 147. 
They weren't the only teams to pass the 100 lap mark. Williams's Nicholas Latifi and Alex Albon started strongly, both hitting 66 tours, bringing their total to 132. The team even bringing out a brand new floor after lunch to evidence their commitment to rapid development of their new chassis. That car looks they nice, man. By Mercedes, with Hamilton and Russell splitting oh, driving no duties to take the tally to 127. Fernando Alonso, now in his 20th preseason, matched the Silver Arrows' effort. So Lewis Hamilton did, did practice. All right, just making sure, just making sure, making sure. His team recently saying they would be pushing performance over reliability. Alpha Tari weren't far behind Alpha Tari. in 21. Yuki Tsunoda being Ooh. entrusted with the AT03's first day of running, while Aston Martin hit 119 laps in total. Despite topping the timesheets, McLaren just managed to pass the magical 100 lap barrier, clocking 101 laps in the dying moments of the day. And despite Haas having one of the most advanced looking cars, Nikita Mazepin and Mick Schumacher could only muster 43 laps, the pair struggling to show off the VF22's qualities. Haas decided not to develop their 2021 car at all, but for now the dividends from that decision remain to be seen. Mm. Unfortunately, we didn't get too many laps in. Uh, we had a cooling leak which prevented us from doing more laps, but I'm pretty sure it's just the beginning. And Alfa Romeo's camouflaged livery ignored the fact the team had a difficult day. Reserve driver Robert Kubica only completing nine laps in the morning, with investigations later revealing a small part had broken. But even with new signing Valtteri Bottas behind the wheel of the C42, the Finn could only manage 23. We did have some issues and unfortunately the, the issues we had were pretty costly with, with time. Um, some issues with reliability, some mechanical things, but we understand it luckily completely and we know how to fix it. We just didn't have time enough time to during the day to fix it properly. Just five drivers are yet to taste the new era of cars. Daniel Ricciardo, Pierre Gasly, Esteban Ocon, Joe Guan Yu and Sergio Perez. And all teams have a real challenge to get their heads around the revolutionary new regulations before pre-season testing kicks off in Bahrain in two weeks time. Mm. Day two, now we got day two, man. You see, day one or in, in the video, day one was you know, McLaren had pretty good. Also, Lando had the fastest lap. We've seen Red Bull, Mercedes. Yes, Alpha, Romeo, and Haas both did struggle. But I think a lot of it was just mechanical issues. But it's good to see him, you know, test out the cars, getting used to the car, the tires, stuff like that, get the tires worn. Let's go and see what day two is talking about. Day two of the preseason track session and intense data gathering was going on up and down the pit lane. Correlation between computer simulations back at base and the cutting edge aerodynamic packages on track will be key to gaining a performance edge as we head towards the first test of the season. An assortment of huge aero rakes adorned the cars as they emerged into the crisp morning light oh. of the circuit de Barcelona. Yeah, I was just going to ask what that was. I know I didn't say it earlier in the video, but I was going to ask what that was. I think, I think she said what, aero racks? So I guess it's supposed to... Uh, it's related to the aerodynamics of the car. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. In a Catalonia, Ferrari's Carlos Sainz interspersing a flurry of quick laps with some constant speed tours as he got to grips with his new steed, the F175. For sure, a day and a half without problems in the car, managing to complete the whole run plan and doing plenty of laps is, is, a, is a good start, especially here in Barcelona. So happy yeah, to, to do all the laps that I've done. The latest buzzword to emerge from the paddock is porpoising, meaning a car that rocks back and forth at high speed, just like the sea mammal, something that appears to be affecting a few teams. It's a phenomenon F1 last experienced oh, yeah, I see it. during the first ground effect era, and one that clearly isn't very welcome. The physics behind, you know, oscillations or porpoising is it, it, pretty understood really, but at the end of the day you've got a large aero surface. You've got to control that. It works particularly well when it's close to the ground, but with that comes risk that if you haven't got those surfaces behaving in the way you want, you can have a, an intended variation in downforce, which leads to porpoising or vibration or instability. Solving the problem will require teams to come up with some clever adaptations to floor design. Drivers up and down the pit lane reported damage caused by the bouncing following the first day of running, 
and it appeared some had already installed interim versions for day two. That is kind of weird. In the top secret world of Formula One, teams were very adept at placing engineers strategically in front of their cars to block eagle-eyed photographers from sharing their secrets. With core reliability established and eight out of the 10 teams surpassing a century of laps on day one, the engineers were turning their attention to tires. 2022 sees the introduction of 18-inch low-profile Pirellis, so all the teams will have to get their heads around not only the change in diameter and how that affects airflow, but also the new rules governing tire warming, with heating blankets now capped at 70 degrees Celsius. The first red flag of the season fell to Red Bull's Sergio Perez. The Mexican had been on a good run in the morning, but his RB18 ground to a halt in Sector 2 as lunchtime approached. Red Bull reported a gearbox issue that also limited his running in the afternoon, while the team investigated the problem. But yeah, that's not good. For the final 90 minutes. I think it's going to take a minute to like really like notice and point out all of the uh, new rules and all that. Because... Like I said, a lot, you know, a lot of stuff has changed this year regarding, you know, like, the rules, regulations from, the, from, you know, the FIA. From last year to this year, like I said, I've been very, very looking forward to it. But it's, it is probably it's going to take some time to, like, properly understand this stuff like that. But very, very looking forward to it. That sucks by, by Red Bull, though. That sucks by Red Bull, you know, obviously getting a, getting a red flag, some mechanical issues. But knowing Red Bull... They, they could probably find a way. I mean, this is the guys who freaking, before a race, managed to fix a car in, in like under like a couple of hours, in which it should have been longer. So, <laughs> these guys can do it. To complete 78 laps overall. It's early days, it's, it's good that these things happen in testing, so. Yeah. Um, I think with what we had, we, we did get- Was that Dan on the back? So, please with that. Nikita Mazepin's Haas caused a second stoppage too, coming to a halt on track due to a damaged fuel pump. But the team had a much better day overall. Did that happen day one? Did they have mechanical issues in day one as well? 66. It was another strong showing from Ferrari, the Scuderia again clocking up the miles. A brief spin for Charles Leclerc, who took the wheel for the afternoon session, didn't seem to dampen confidence as he went on to post the fastest time. Yes, sir. My boy. Time sheets, clocking a 1 minute 19.689. My boy. Just one tenth shy of Lando Norris's quickest time for McLaren on day one. Once again, Ferrari led the way on mileage, completing 150 laps. Mm, Red Bull was pretty good. race distances. They were closely followed by Alpha Tauri on 147. Pierre oh, yeah, because it's Sergio Perez, that's why. Six kilometer circuit, with many suggesting that they are a team to keep an eye on. I must say, I was super excited. Uh, you know, especially with the, this new car, just to understand a bit more how it works and, uh, and have a sort of idea how my feelings will be inside this new car. And it's been really good, it's been really positive, um, straight out of the box. Aston Martin hit 129 laps with McLaren on their tails. Daniel Ricciardo getting his first full day in the MCL 36 and topping the morning session. The Australian completing 126 laps and feeling confident. That's pretty Not good. Too much of the times, but of course it's nice to be towards the top of the page and the bottom. But uh, in any case, still, uh, you know, your Red Bulls, your Mercs, they haven't showed really. Your Mercs. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens when that all, when everyone kind of opens up a little more. Alpine's Esteban Ocon got his first taste of the new A522, working on setup options in the morning and running a full race simulation in the afternoon. Their progress only momentarily halted by a broken floor bracket. Aston Martin's Lance Stroll and Sebastian Vettel shared 600 kilometers between them, while overnight repairs on the Alfa Romeo took slightly longer than planned, and Valtteri Bottas emerged on the track late, clocking a total of just 21 laps, two fewer than he managed on day one. But his teammate Joe Guan Yu had much better fortune, taking to the circuit for the first time and getting some decent runs under his belt. 71 laps on his debut for China's first F1 driver. That's what's up, There's hey! One day of running left before the teams depart from Spain and prepare to head to Bahrain for the official pre-season test in two weeks' time.